we're going to show you guys how you can set up BitTorrenting on your NAS for free server or your free NAS server right after the intro. Alrighty guys, in this video, Matt here, Mr. Matt Darnell, and we're going to show you guys how you can set up BitTorrenting on your NAS for free server or your free NAS server box. Alrighty guys, so setting up BitTorrent on your NAS is a little bit more complex than most people think. You have to set up port forwarding, you have to set up your DNS settings, which requires a physical monitor or a serial, con serial console on your NAS, along with a keyboard. Now I know I said you would not need a keyboard, console, or monitor right after this, but you do need it to set up BitTorrenting unless you've already set up your DNS settings. So yeah. Alrighty guys, so the first thing you need to do is you need to set up your DNS settings. I'm going to show you guys how you can do that here in a second. Uh, the main thing you want to figure out though, first off, is who am I going to use for my DNS settings? Am I going to use Google's DNS servers like I'm using? Or am I going to use my own DNS server which is configured on my router? Or am I using a corporate DNS server if I'm using this in an enterprise configuration? You need to figure that out. Uh, typically if you're using your own DNS server that would be 192.168.1.1 or it would be 0 0.1 depending on your DNS settings. Or you can use uh, Google's DNS servers like I did, which would be 8.8.8.8. .8 yes, that's four eights there and a dot in between each eight. Alrighty guys, now that you need to know your DNS stuff, uh, we are going to head over to our NAS. We're going to go ahead and plug up a monitor and keyboard, and I will see you guys on that NAS. Alrighty guys, now that we're on our NAS here, we're just going to go and we're going to enter number two here. We'll press enter, press no on DHCP, LAN IPv4 address, just leave that the same. We'll leave this the same too. Under IPv4 default gateway, just leave that the same. We'll have 192.168.1.1 or 0 .01. DNS server, you want to go ahead and select that DNS server you used. We're using 8.8.848. Uh, we'll press no on IPv6. And if all is good here, you'll see a success. We'll go ahead and press enter here. And we'll go ahead and we will ping a host. We'll type in a website. In this case, we'll type in mrmattdarnell.com, my website. You should go check it out and we'll ping it. And if it works, we'll get three pings and we're done here. Alrighty guys, we have set that up. We have our DNS settings configured. We should be able to connect to the internet to set up BitTorrenting and all that good stuff. Alrighty guys, now I will see you guys on the computer. Alrighty guys, now that we have our DNS settings set up and we have our configurations you know, land management here, and as you can see, we have all that good stuff set up, and you no longer have the warning, mes warning message, uh, error DNS settings, or services are not set up. You will no longer have that error once we have our DNS set up. Alrighty, guys, so now that we are here, we can go ahead and ignore this uh, free NAS page for now, or NAS for free page. We can go ahead and minimize that. Now you want to go to your Wi Fi router or your modem and Wi-Fi router, depending on your configuration. Uh, this will not be the same for you. Uh, yours will look different, unless of course you have the exact same configuration I have. Now I'm gonna show you guys right here how you can set up port forwarding. So you just wanna go to 192.168.1.1, and it should bring you to your Wi-Fi router. If that doesn't work, like I said, it would be 0 0.1 depending on your configuration. In my case, it's 1.1 is the Wi-Fi router. Of course, you'll need your username and password. If you do not know that, then you can try admin as the username, then password is the password. And if that doesn't work, then you can Google it, or you can always look at the sticker that should be on your Wi-Fi router or modem. And like I said, if you don't have a sticker or something, then you can Google it. 
and you should be able to find the default somewhere on Google. And I highly recommend you change those as well. Alrighty guys, so now that we are in our Wi-Fi router page right here, we just want to go, in my case it's Applications and Gaming. And of course I have to sign in once again. Mine is Applications and Gaming, and we'll go to Single Port Forwarding, or Port Forwarding, depending on what yours is. So now you want to come down here and you want to type in a name. You can give it a name. I'm naming it BT NAS uh, for BitTorrent on my NAS. Under the external port, you can choose whichever port you want, which is in the range. Of course, you need to make sure it's in the range once again. Uh, the default that most people use, and I'm going to use it as well, is 51413. And you just want to have that on your external and internal port. Protocol, you want to do both under the protocol and to IP address, you want to do 192.168.1, and then of course you have your IP address of your NAS, whichever one we use to connect to our NAS here, minus 250. And you can go ahead and check enabled, and you'll save the settings. And that's going to set up our port forwarding for us. Now that we have that done, uh, we should be good to go on here. We can close that out there. Now it is time to set up the NAS for free configuration once again. Alrighty guys, so I'm going to show you guys what we're going to do here. We're going to go to File Manager. Under File Manager, ma manager here, we're going to go ahead and log in. And now that we're in File Manager here, we are just going to go to our MNT, and we'll go to the drive that we want to store those on. In this case, I'll put it here, and we'll go here, and we'll create a new directory. Go to the place where you want to put the directory. In this case, mine. I'm putting it on the first Western Digital Green Drive, where I have all my files, and we'll create a directory, and we will name it. Let's say torrent. And we'll create that directory. And now that we have that directory created, uh, we'll go ahead and create another directory. And we'll put torrent files. And we'll create that directory right there. Now that we have those two directories created, we can do that in our Windows Explorer if you want to, but I'm just going to show you the file manager here. Now that we have those two directories created, we can use the WinSCP. And we're just going to log in. And we're going to log in here. And now that we're in here, we'll go up. We'll go to our MNT once again. We'll go to that drive. We'll go to M here. We'll go in here and under torrent here, go to properties. In this case, I'm just going to make it to where everyone can read and write to it because that's what works for me on my network. Uh, of course, your configuration will be different. Uh, right here, you can configure it where anyone in this certain directory, all that good stuff under your permissions. I'm just going to leave that like so. And we can go ahead and we can close that out here. We'll click OK, and we'll come back here. Now at this point, we can uh, we can create a share to share this torrent folder here, or you can just go ahead and skip that if it's already in a share. As you can see right here, we go here. As you can see right here, I have those two folders there. 
You can create a separate share if you want to. I'm not going to go into that. So now we can finally enable BitTorrent. So we just want to go to services here, go to BitTorrent, and we can go ahead and enable this. Alrighty guys, now right here under Peer Port, you want to make sure this is the same port that we used in port forwarding. In this case, mine is 51413. That's the port I used. Uh, that's the port, the default port that most people will use. But that is the port. You want to make sure you match those up. If you used a different port in your range, then you want to have a different port right there. Now, under download directory here, we'll go press that, and we'll go ahead and find that torrent directory we created. We'll click OK, and we have that right there. Down here, we can just leave those uh, done. Encryption, uh, you can do it if you want it preferred, required, or tolerated. I do preferred, that's just the easiest one to use. If you want to have maximum security, then do required, of course. Now right here we can select the upload bandwidth, download bandwidth, of course this is if you want to cap it, like say if you only, let's say if you have 100 megabit download and you only want your NAS to use 50 so it doesn't use up all your network, you can choose 50 right here. Of course this is in kilobits, so you'll need to watch that. Now under watch directory here, we just want to go here, we'll go to our western digital drive once again, and we'll go to that other directory we created torrent files. We'll click OK. Incomplete directory, you can have that there. User mask, you can leave those blank. Extra options, you shouldn't need to worry about those. And under those, you can just leave those like so. Username and password. Uh, in this case, we'll do We'll set up a username and password, and as you can see right here is the URL that we can access uh, the torrent uh, manager. We'll go ahead and save and restart. My bad. And we'll wait for it to load here. Changes have been applied successfully. And if we click on the URL down here, we'll just need to sign in. And as you can see right here, we are in the uh, BitTorrent uh, transmission web interface, the client that is running on our NAS. So if I go ahead and add in a torrent file here, in this case we'll go to cat.ph. And let's say I want to Let's say I want to get Terra Copy. Right here. And just for demonstrations, we'll download the torrent. I'll go ahead and disable this. And we'll download the torrent file here. And right here we will save it to that drive, that folder we created. We'll click that there. And we'll click OK. As you can see it downloaded that torrent file there. And if we go to transmission here and we reload the page, as you can see right there, it automatically starts downloading that torrent there. Like so. And then so you can automatically add in torrents. Of course, if you're in Windows Explorer, we would just go to that folder we set up, torrent files here, and it's going to automatically download torrents that we drop in here. And it's going to go ahead and download that. Uh, my case is relatively slow right now. And once it's downloaded, it will put it in our torrent folder here. This is how you can set up a BitTorrent uh, client on your NAS. Hope this helped you out. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hope you guys come back for future NAS tutorials and all that good stuff. Until next time, guys, I'll see you later.